It's a Wednesday evening. Hello, good evening, and welcome to Business Life. My name is Imano Apuaji Yafe. Coming up in today's edition, recent challenges with crude oil production in the Jubilee field, as well as declining oil prices, affect half year performance of Talo oil. Mobile subscribers now spared additional service cost of operations. The Interconnect Clearinghouse ICH would have brought on to them. And final year students of the Ghana Institute of Journalism, Joyce Owusu, shares her story on how she discovered her passion that will be on Joy Business Fund. These are the headlines. You can get interactive with us by tweeting at Joy Business GH and also by going onto Facebook. The page is Joy Business. For more business news updates, log on to myjoyonline.com slash business. Taking a break, we'll be back with the details. Welcome back now the details. The recent challenges with crude production on the Jubilee fields and the declining oil prices have affected the half-year performance of Talo Oil. Results covering its operations up to June this year saw a significant decline in revenue and other areas. George Raffi has more. And resulted in revenue going down by 34% to $542 million, whilst tax before profit went down by more than 300% to $24 million. Sales revenue also saw a significant decline to a little over 50,000 barrels a day. The development has affected earnings on every share held by an investor. The half-year results shows that Ghana still accounts for a large chunk of its spending as the company has set aside $700 million as capital expenditure for this year. But there appears to be light at the end of the tunnel for Talu when it comes to its financial performance. Group Chief Executive Aiden Havy has confirmed that commercial production of crude oil from the country's second biggest oil field, apart from Jubilee, that is Chinebuanyara and Tome 10, will start from early August. It confirms an earlier report by Joy Business that production is expected to start from the second week of August this year. Mr. Havy is optimistic that starting production at 10 could greatly improve its fortunes. Chief Executive of Talu Oil Ghana, Charles Dark, who tells Joy Business they have learned their lessons from Jubilee as they work to start production from the 10th field, especially when it comes to the FPSO. The whole range of lessons learned that we're taking from Jubilee into FPSO Jonathan Mills. Indeed, industry experience was also brought to bear because the manufacturers have various other FPSOs. So we expect and we're quite confident that from a design perspective and from an operational perspective, we, will probably, we should see better output. But it's a plant and plant and equipment can always break down with new problems. So we remain confident that we've got the right for the purposes that we need. A pickup in Taloyal fortunes could impact positively on revenue and taxes for the state, as well as good returns for shareholders in Ghana, and even employment opportunities for indigenous. That was George Raffi's report, and in another development, Minister of Finance said Tepe has, has been explaining the need for government uh, to make adjustments to its revenue generation and expenditure. This, he said, has come as a result of challenges the country is confronted with by way of falling commodity prices on the world market. He cited recent problems the FPS Kwan and Chroma is encountering on the Jubilee field and said this has impacted negatively on revenue mobilization. Setepe said this in Accra when he engaged journalists on the supplementary budget presented. You have to make some effort at adjustments. And it's not easy because it affects you know, expenditures and the rest. And again, government is like households and businesses. The practice of adjusting you know, revenues and expenditures has a run fortunes buys on you and say commodity prices increase and you create buffers. 
so that when there are hard times, you can fall on it, like our stabilization levy, which brought in over 500 million US dollars in two and a half years, and we took almost 218 million to support the budget, and also our debt management. Let's focus on these structural things that we are putting in place. I think those are the things that we have to do. We are not in control of crude oil prices, we are not in control of weapons blowing the pipeline, and we are not in control of many things. Without offering excuses, what you do is, yes, this affects your target or your goal. Now moving down to the downstream sector of the industry, the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers is lamenting the failure of oil marketing companies to alter their prices to reflect the reduction in prices of petroleum prices products. The Chamber expected a 7% decrease in prices earlier following a favorable world market index. But barely at the end of the second pricing window in July, oil marketing companies are yet to reduce prices. In an interview, Executive Secretary of the Chamber, Duncan Amwa, said Ghanaians are fast losing confidence in the deregulation program as a result of the actions of marketing companies. Most uh, filling stations uh, continue to dispense fuel around 16 Ghana cities, uh, with some doing about 15.750 at the pump. At the time that uh, our calculations also indicate, that we could have gone to about uh, 14.92 uh, thereabouts. Home prices continue to be high, and Ghanaians continue to be charged a little much more than they should have. If you check uh, the figures on the world market as we speak currently, uh, WCI is hovering around 42.92. Uh, Brent is around $44. Clearly, the variance uh, is a significant one, but uh, after this becoming of the system, that is only when uh, world market indexes go up that you find the players or distributors uh, heeding uh, to the call for prices to go up. But when it has to come down, uh, we are beginning to lose confidence in the system uh, to treat all of us fairly. If you cannot use uh, crude prices to determine fuel prices, uh, I wonder what else anywhere in the world uh, will be a determinant factor. If you check global petrol prices uh, for this week, uh, as I keep getting reports every now and then, uh, Ghana has moved further down to the 75th position uh, from the 72nd previously. As we speak today, countries across the world, including the U.S., uh, continue to have fuel prices uh, going down in those systems where deregulation is being practiced soundly. When it gets to Ghana, uh, then you will find the hawks and uh, you will find uh, the other institutions which have uh, been set up to protect one interest or the other, talking against reductions at a time when it is clear that from $49 to even $44 today, uh, the variance is more than 10%. Now moving on, mobile subscribers have for now been spared any additional service costs the operations of the Interconnect Clearinghouse, ICH, would have brought to them. The National Communications Authority has decided to absorb the cost component until the current Interconnect regime expires on the 31st of December 2017. The authority took the decision after Parliament approved regulations covering the operations of an ICH. This morning, this report. Regulations known as the Electronic Communications and to Connect Clearinghouse Services Regulations 2016 are for controlling the activities of the service providers that connect and route local and international traffic through an interconnect clearinghouse licensed by the National Communications Authority. The current interconnect regime does not include the cost of the ICH. The interconnect rates will remain the same until January 2018. The Interconnect Clearinghouse offers a common platform for monitoring voice and data traffic volumes in Ghana, operates a centralized subscriber, as well as equipment identity registry. It, among other benefits, also provides efficient billing and settlement process with verifiable call detail record to reduce billing disputes amongst service providers. It is also expected to pave the way for full interoperability of various technologies by various service providers to the benefit of consumers. 
The Director General of the NCA, William Tevi, has emphasized through the ICH, they are able to increase focus on transparency at all levels of operations to ensure ethical functioning within the telecommunication industry. Now, CEO of Agro Brasilia, a global commodities and industrial brokerage firm, Nana Yali, has also emphasized that tapping into other renewable energy sources apart from hydro and thermal can be a turning point in rectifying the persistent power issues in the country. Ghana's energy sector crisis continues to be the bane of businesses. With the return of power outages, many businesses are once again bearing the brunt of the erratic power cuts being experienced across the country. And Ayali was speaking in an interview with Joy Business. The power crisis in the country, which seemed to have minimized, has been short-lived with many companies beginning to feel the pinch once again. With many parts of the capital currently experiencing load shedding, the situation is dealing a big blow to power users, especially businesses. With the crisis seeing no permanent end in sight, some businesses continue to advocate renewable energy sources. Speaking to Joy Business News, CEO of Agro Brasilia Global Commodities and Industrial Brokerage Firm, Nanayali, said although Ghana is showing bright growth prospects, businesses cannot operate and thrive without stable power supply conditions. Well, if you look at your energy mix now, Ghana is dependent on hydro, thermal, now it's embarked on the wind and solar. Uh, the bioenergy experiment in Ghana isn't on such a rapid fire type of a progression that we at Agro Brasilia would like to see. Uh, so if we can tap into this whole analysis and look at the problems the nation has been facing with all these blackouts. I mean, we've been here for less than a week and we've experienced many blackouts already. Um, and that to me isn't conducive to what we call a modern infrastructure. A modern society today must have reliable power. How are you going to run your industries if it's sporadic, you know? And so that is our focus, to kind of come in here, study Ghana's energy matrix, and pull in our resource, and help the nation find its footing in the 21st industry. Nanayali advocated the adoption of renewable energy sources in Ghana and said this will help create jobs in the hinterlands and alleviate the pressure on electricity supply within the bigger cities. Ghana has actually enacted some smart policies trying to get into the grid to uh, 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 enhance its power grid system. Mm -hmm. They're going to be smart grid mode. You know, I don't know how far this spreads inland. But look at the benefits of this as were we to go past Bonga Half region, northern region, that delta, we will develop job opportunities. We will create infrastructure that will benefit the masses, the people. Uh, we've been driving around the city of Accra and realized there's always a traffic gridlock here and there. That's because a lot of nations in Africa, they tend to centralize their policies. You know, where the vast majority of interests are given to the capital cities. So then what happens to the inland? The inland areas, everyone flock, flocks to the capital mm -hmm. and they do so for good measure looking for jobs. This is Business Live. Time to take a look at some international business news updates. Thank you very much for staying. Now, in May this year, her firm, Purple Trends GH, was adjudged the best student startup. Africans Fashion Accessories lineup line run by the final year student of the Ghana Institute of Journalism, Joyce Usu. She, had, she shares her story on how she discovered her passion on the Joy Business Farm. The Joy Business Van is brought to you by Busy, making good things happen. 
Joyce Ousu just wrote her final exam at the Ghana Institute of Journalism where she's studying to be a communicator but that is not what she's most passionate about. Wondering what? Just ride along. Joyce is a fashionista. Her passion, oh no, her curiosity led her to try her hands on making necklaces, bracelets and other accessories. I saw a beaded chalote or a flip flop that had been decorated with beads. I saw it to be something very interesting, something nice and I wanted to try my hands on. So I remember I bought the slippers and I got the beads and then I designed it. I just had to critically look at what I saw the first time and try to see if I could replicate or emulate or do something similar or same as I had seen. Joyce didn't know how good she was at making the stuff she does until she started doing them. How she's able to do them, she has no idea. She'd make accessories for friends and family. Then she realized it could be good business. I hadn't even conceived the idea of getting it into a business. I thought I was just having fun. So I realized that anytime I wore one to work, people liked it. Then I was working with a firm. People liked it. They wanted to know where I bought it from, who made it and all of that. So I told them I make it myself. People started to request for it. So I made them, took them to work and that was how I started. I started with 50 Ghana cities. My very first capital the money I used to start the business was 50 Ghana cities and what I did was that anytime I sold I added up to the I mean I added the profit back to whatever amount I had to buy the raw materials and that's how it's been so far with that amount purple trends GH got to his feet all that while in school for the past two years she has had to juggle between school and her passion first thing it's been Wahala. <laughs> But God's grace has been enough. The, there were days of only, I mean, I only slept for just two hours and three hours, yes. Joyce has done amazing work for projects such as the MTN Hitmaker Seasons 4 and 5 and Miss Ghana 2015. All that hard work has paid off. Purple Trends was earlier this year recognized as the best student startup at the Ghana Startup Awards. How did that make you feel? Um, it really made me feel good because <laughs> for some reason, of okay. you should. <laughs> yeah, really, I was. The thing is, when the nominations came out, I was like, oh, really? Because I least expected that nomination. Joyce works from her Porsche at home. She's very focused, and one of the people she draws inspiration from is Mabel Simpson, creative entrepreneur behind M Sims. I was one time thinking about the fact that I don't have a shop, I don't have a showroom. How am I going to cope? How am I? Is there a way? Then I remember I heard the story of Mabel Simpson. I mean, that story, that bit of her story that she was working from her garage motivated me to say that if she's in a garage and I don't need, if I don't have the means now to own a shop and I can still operate from the dining table, I should work it out until I was able to get a place of my own, not a place for the business where I live and I made room, which is my porch, to use for this work. So I am working from my porch and I hope that this one inspires somebody too. Joyce currently markets her accessories on social media and makes deliveries as well. She's looking to have a showroom of her own. So this is it, Purple Trends GH in this little corner. This is where she operates from and who says you can't start small. Well, this will be it for this episode of the Joy Business Fan. It is empowered by Joy Business, it's brought to you by Busy, making good things happen. Time to go. Business Van was brought to you by Busy Making Good Things Happen. So you can always catch the Joy Business Van every Wednesday on Business Live. In the meantime, you can watch a repeat of this particular episode on Marketplace tomorrow at 1 p.m. on this same channel. Time now for your busy bits.
Students' essay and you're shocked. It's outstanding, exactly what you wanted to see. Unfortunately, some things are just too good to be true. Your student might have just become one of the millions of kids each year who chose to copy a paper or parts of a paper off the internet rather than do their own work. You may have just caught a plagiarist. But how do you prove it? Let's say a student just turned in this definition to you and you are concerned that it isn't their work. Let's say you suspect they just copied and pasted the definition from the internet. Here's the easy way to catch a plagiarist. Go to google.com and type a phrase or sentence from the suspected work. Click Google search and if you're right, you find the exact web page the suspected plagiarist pilfered their work from. And your students thought you'd never figure out how to catch them. Now, operators of DSTV and Go TV Ghana, Multi Choice Ghana, is pressing for policymakers to do more in tackling illegal broadcasting of digital television content by some local TV stations. This, according to the company, has become crucial because the phenomenon is unduly taking a huge toll on not only on its operations in the country but the creative industry at large. There have been suggestions that multi-choice may have to brace itself for keener competition from other digital TV networks due to the ongoing digital broadcasting migration. But the company has downplayed... The biggest issue in Ghana is piracy. And for us, that is the biggest concern. And, you know, we've seen TV stations uh, take... Uh, sports programs etc illegally and show it and uh, that is the biggest problem and, and we have to uh, put up the necessary fight it doesn't affect only us it affects the whole creative industry including uh, your station and uh, you know so this is I think the biggest problem before uh, any other competition um, with competition, apart from piracy, if you talk about competition, for us competition is healthy because I think if we had a lot more pay TV companies in the country, okay, we probably may have uh, uh, had, had uh, been able to lobby for a different tax structure much faster. And that will be it for Business Life for today. You can always tweet us at Joy Business GH is the, Joy, is the handle and also you can Facebook us by going on to Joy Business our page for more business news updates log on to myjoyonline.com slash business make a date again same time tomorrow for another interesting package my name is Imano Abwaji Good evening